My name is Bill Krebs. I live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I am a self-advocate who, ha who has an intellectual disability. Why do you want to be an NCSA officer? Well, I think it's good to be an NCA officer because you learn from other people who are self-advocates from other states what's going on in their states. And we can share ideals, share dreams, and get things done. What national, state, or local disability advocacy experience do you have? Back in the days when Barack Obama was on his second term, I was invited to sit on a committee for employment. Because employment is very important for people with intellectual disabilities instead of working in a workshop. I sat on the Governor's Affair for Disabilities in my own here in Pennsylvania and other committees, even the poor provider agencies. I I made sure that they had to do what they had to do to help people like ourselves to get what they need. And do you organize self-advocacy groups? Yes, I did. I, was, I have four self-advocacy groups some representing already. One is called Speaking for Itself, who's a statewide self-advocacy group. We started loud and proud in this thing called Sunbury, Pennsylvania, thanks to my guidance being the advisory. I did... Uh, the GO team in New Jersey, South Jersey, to perform numb people to get out of institutions. And the last thing I do, here I am at my office, and we started the, this organization called Speak Up Delaware, when it was just a social group. Now they're empowering their, each other. Great. Um, a big part of being an N NCSA officer is leading and working on a committee. This involves giving feedback on many different issues and working together to make decisions. What experiences do you have leading or working on a committee? As I said earlier, I sat on the governor's meeting. I sat on the president's meeting. I sat on local committees in my, in my field that I'm doing. And I sat on statewide. I sat on a thing called the Plan Advisory Committee to make sure people understand what's going on. I didn't just do it for myself. I did it for other people with disabilities to share that wealth with because power is knowledge. Is I am for q a committee? I am for q is a statewide organization in Pennsylvania who goes out and monitors people who get services through the waiver. So we monitor people three times a year, four times a year, and make sure they're getting what they need. As a self-advocate, I sat on that committee to oversee as the co-chair of that committee to make sure people are getting what they need. Okay. And Inclusion International? Inclusion International is part of an organization that I just started joining. And they're a national-wide organization, not just here in the United States. They're all over. What we are doing now is helping people understand the services they're getting and helping support coordinators to support them with dignity and respect. Um, what are one or two ideas you have on how to help self-advocates better engage in advocacy on the national and state levels? Well, one of the things I want to do is my dream is to get a nationalized uh, waiver because we do that with people, we don't do that with people with disabilities. They tell you you have to be on a wait list. So we can end the wait list across the United States by being, having a national waiver to support them in every way they can. For example, if you were a military person who lived here in Pennsylvania and you moved to California, your son or daughter has got to be on a waiting list. Why should people be waiting for services when they really need it? Mm -hmm. and, and your mission here at Keystone is to organize self-advocacy groups. That's true. Like I said, we started, we started, they started as a social group and didn't know nothing about self-advocacy. I've been a self-advocate mostly all my life, helping other people like myself understand what goes on. When I came here, I started changing the directions and the way they think and the way they do business now.